Hey friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Kay, I'm a professional home organizer and I live in Boston and I'm also a soprano and this is my super cool kitchen. So we bought this house about a year ago and we loved this kitchen. It was part of what sold us the house, um, but we've made some minor tweaks and changes to make it more our style and I think we have sort of finished organizing it and I just wanted to show it to you. I'm gonna open every cabinet, every drawer and let you see the organizing solution inside. So if you're looking for some inspiration on how to organize your kitchen, this is the video for you. Disclaimers, before we start this video, even though I am a professional organizer, I do not claim to be a minimalist and I do love to cook. I've got all kinds of gadgets, things. I've got a spiralizer. I've got all kinds of jars because I make sauces. I make pickles. I do all kinds of things. So if you're looking for a minimalist kitchen tour, this is not it. But if you're looking for an organized kitchen tour, this is the place for you. All right. Let's get started. The first update I wanted to share with you is that we traded in our silver hardware for matte black hardware and I think it was one of the best design choices we made. Matte black is definitely having a moment right now and I think it looks really cool next to the white and it updates the look a little bit. I feel like it was looking a little dated with the silver even though it was really beautiful. This project took a very long time. It took much longer than I anticipated. I had some problems. The holes aren't aligned very accurately and there looks like there had been some fudging with the holes, the original holes. So um, I had to like get different hardware to like make it work, but I managed to do it in a day. It took like three hours. It took so long, but it looks so good. And while we're on the matte black moment, the other awesome update we'd made to our kitchen is we replaced our kitchen faucet. Now this dishwashing dispenser also was not working at all. It was broken. And when the plumbers installed this, they actually had this in their trunk and I didn't buy one to match it. It was just kind of an afterthought, but they did replace it with the one they had. It does work. It just doesn't match <laughs> the rest of our stuff. But this faucet is so beautiful. It's from Amazon. And the best thing about it is it's automatic. This is a feature we really appreciated because again, we cook a lot and when I have my hands full of dough or some meat juices that I don't wanna contaminate my whole kitchen with, I can come over and I can quickly turn on the faucet. It is so cool, it does have a sprayer. Our old faucet had some issues. I don't know what happened to it, but it was definitely broken. Every time that you switched between the sprayer and the stream, it would make a terrible noise and it was the button didn't really work correctly. You'd have to hold it down. It was horrible. I don't even know how we lived with it for so long, but this faucet has just been our 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 love. And next to it, I figured if, you know, while we're going on the automatic train, we might as well get an automatic soap dispenser for our hands when we want to wash our hands. So this way we don't contaminate anything in our kitchen. And this was not cheap. This was about 80 bucks. It's, it's made by a brand called Simple Human. You guys know I love Simple Human. They make some of the coolest products. And it was a little bit pricey, but I, and I hesitated. But then now that I've had it for a month, a month and a half, I love it. I don't regret any money I spent on it. It works great. I heard it only needs to be charged once every three months. We only had this about a month and a half so I'm still waiting the jury's still out on that but it works great if you, if you put your hand close to the dispenser it only uh, dispenses a little bit of soap if you put it like farther away it dispenses a lot more soap so it's very very good and it matches the matte black faucet very well. We also have upgraded our dish drying solution. This is a dish drying rack from OXO and what's great about it is it collapses if we need to put it away and like if we had company come over, coming over and we don't want to have it out um, or if I need to clean it and store it for a while uh, it, folds, it folds completely flat and it can be stored in a really small tight space and I love it. The main thing I love about it though is it matches the aesthetic of the kitchen now because it's like it's not black but it's like charcoal and silver. So I'll start the tour over in this corner, the coffee corner. This is where we have all of our beautiful morning coffee. We have a Keurig machine. The thing about the Keurig machine is we were tired of using K-cups because they there's something we felt weird about it because they can't really be recycled unless you take them apart. We didn't feel comfortable throwing them into the garbage. So we decided to get reusable K-cups and this is the drawer where they're kept. We do have this reusable K-cup organizer. I do think I don't need this much space for them because I think, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we might have 
a couple others. I think we have one downstairs and one in the washing machine, so we have 10. But um, maybe I can get another solution so I can store more things in here, but we also have reusable straws and our milk frothers. This milk frother is amazing. We got it from Amazon. And what's great about it is you can take the frothing part off and put it in the dishwasher. And it also comes with a little whisk. So we can make all of the lattes and cappuccinos you ever imagined. Right below this drawer is basically the recycling, nothing special there. And up here is where we have all of our glasses and mugs. The mugs are on a cabinet shelf and that is a great way to extend the storage space if you need to have a little extra space up here to store some more things so you're not like piling things on top of one another. We also keep our coffee in here and our travel cups and some more pitchers. Next to this cabinet is the dishwasher. I have made some repairs to this dishwasher more than I'd like. I had to replace some of the, the spinning arms because they had food stuck in them and then a couple parts actually broke inside. So I, I don't know if I'd rebuy this dishwasher. However, but you know, we're, we're making do until we have to replace it. it, still works. A lot of thing, a lot of questions I get are about this dirty clean sign. I got this from, Target, but I do believe they sell it on Amazon and on Container Store. By the way, if I talk about any organizing products, I will do my best to try to link them in the description or in my Amazon storefront. Those will be affiliate links just to let you know that support the channel, but I will link them there for you. On the front, it says, sorry, we're dirty. And on the back, it says, come in, we're clean. So uh, this is for all of the spouses, partners, boyfriends, roommates who always ask you whether or not the dishes are clean or dirty. Now you don't have to answer that question. I mean, they could just look inside, but we're not gonna talk about that. Underneath the sink is of course, underneath sink things, but <laughs> on the outside, we have places to put the microfiber cleaning cloth and the dish drying towel. I replaced the, I used to have silver ones of these and I actually used to put them on the inside, but I keep them on the outside now so they can dry. And the ones that are black are expandable and they are, so cool. So I have this one a little bit wider for the towel and this one a little bit narrower for the microfiber cloth. Inside is just typical under sink business, cleaning supplies, dishwashing tabs, counter spray, the fat from bacon and, and solid fat that we can't really put down the drain, as well as our dishwashing gloves and dishwashing tools. A really great solution is to put command hooks on the doors of your cabinets to take advantage of some of that space. Funny story, the previous owner of this house was uh, a client of a colleague of mine. <laughs> when I came in here to look, I, I saw some of the solution. I opened up cabinets, cause I do, I do. And I was like, wow, this seems very professional organizer organized. And it turns out that I know the organizer. <laughs> and um, I feel like a lot of us have different styles of professionally organizing or people or talking to people, dealing with clients. But a lot of what we do is very much the same. And I knew when I saw that it, we had a professional organizer here. So weird story. <laughs> Next to the sink, we've got the spice drawer. It's a, play, a strange place for spices, but I love having this spice drawer solution. I get a lot of questions on where these jars are from. They're from Michael's. I did an entire video where I did this project. I did have a different labeling solution back then. I made all of these labels with my Cricut Joy machine. It was very fun, took a very long time though. I have had these forever and these are our most used spices. I have some more in another cabinet, which I'll show you. This. Spice drawer organizer is from the container store, but it's also on Amazon. It has been such a good little thing to have and keep clutter off the counter and out of my cabinets. I do think it's time for a, an upgrade to something a little nicer. So maybe that's one of my projects that I'll do this month, but this is the spice drawer. And you know, I'm from Maryland, even though I live in Boston, you can take the girl out of Maryland, but you can't take the Maryland out of the girl. Under here, we have the first of the cooking vessels and, gadgets. I've got both of my stock pots in here for making soup or bone broth or whatever. And my crock pot is actually back here, my slow cooker. And I have a, a couple pans for roasting and my pie plate and all that stuff. And then I have got my rice maker from Dash, which this thing has been 
so amazing for me. And I just got that egg maker from Dash and the reviews on Amazon are very good, but they say that the alarm on it is super loud and you can't turn it off, but they say that it does everything perfectly. Now I am a very big fan of poaching eggs. I'm like poaching eggs all the time. You know, we put them in the water with the vinegar, you swirl it around. I'm a big fan, but if I can do it in a machine, <laughs> I'm going to try it. And plus like you know, hard boiled eggs, soft boiled eggs. We'll see. We'll see how I like it. But apparently it's really amazing, but it's loud. And yes, I do own a machine that does one thing. Uh, I, but you know what? We have a place to store it, so it's okay. The next cabinet is where we have our caraway cookware. This is a beautiful brand of ceramic nonstick cookware. I don't do any extreme heat or rough cooking with these. They're just for like if I make breakfast or if I make a, ver a soup that I don't need to like scrape the bottom of. Uh, this was very kindly gifted to me by Caraway. They're beautiful. They are made of ceramic. Now they don't have Teflon and they are very, very, very nonstick. Like nothing sticks to them. They're super easy to clean. I love them. <laughs> and they have their own organizer, which is amazing. I'm going to take one out of here so you can see. Look at that, they come with like a little file system. <laughs> they also have a little organizer for the lids, which is right there. I don't have any place else to keep my little steaming uh, thing here. What is this, a steaming, steaming basket, steaming basket. <laughs> so it's right here instead. Above that, we just have our utensils. It's a little strange to have our utensils next to the stove, but that's just where it happened to work out with dimensions and everything. Even though my husband and I have been married for like eight years. We still have a mishmash kind of mix of silverware. One day we'll get like a cohesive set of silverware. The only thing I wanted to remark about this drawer is that it's divided with bamboo organizers, but they're all modular. I can pull each one of these compartments out. And this is what I recommend if you have a really hard to fit drawer. Not every drawer is standard. A lot of old drawers have really strange dimensions. I know that they try to build a lot of things sort of uh, the same size nowadays, but with old houses and with tight spaces, it can be a little tricky. So always recommend going modular when you can. Across from that, we've got a little small cabinet next to the oven just with plates and bowls in it. We've got a really nice selection of cute bowls and plates from a company called Year and Day. It was like one of those Instagram ads that got me. When the products got here, I was really satisfied. They're beautiful, beautiful plates and bowls. We got two colors. We got this blue called, I think it's called Midnight. And then we got this pink called Oh man, what's it called? Dawn? Dusk? One of those <laughs> One of those colors. And then we have some mini bowls from Target. If you're looking for extra storage space, you don't want to pile plates on top of one another. Another thing I recommend is a cabinet shelf. This is a beautiful cabinet shelf that was gifted to me by a brand called Open Spaces. It is one of the most well-made things I've ever received for organizing. It's so beautiful, made of solid wood here and metal here, so there's no plastic parts on it. And it's so worth it. So uh, again, I will link everything down in the description, um, but not only is it functional, it is absolutely beautiful. To the cabinet, to the left of the oven and stove, we have the oils and vinegars, a spoon rest that is also a lid holder. I will definitely put some footage of what the functionality is like in this. This is one of the most incredible things I've purchased. It's so useful. It's from a brand called Yamazaki. I'm a big fan of Yamazaki. They make such beautiful and functional organizing products. Above the oils, I just have some trivets. In fact, in case I need to put something hot right down on the counter. And right above here, we just have some extra spices that don't fit inside the little jars. A really fun thing that I've done is try to quasi alphabetize these spices sort of so I know where things are and that's also what I recommend for the spice drawer as well those are alphabetized so if I need to reach for rosemary I know exactly where that is if I need to reach for all spice it's right at the beginning so I always recommend alphabetizing it takes a long time to set up but it's easy to maintain so highly recommend I also love a good turntable because you will never have anything in the back to the left of the stove, we have our more hearty cooking vessels. <laughs> so if I need to sear something or use extreme heat to cook something, or if I need to really scrape it with a 
tool that is metal. I reach for things in this cabinet. We also have uh, pizza, stone, and a couple other things. We have cast iron in here as well, the splatter screen. These are, you know, kind of serious cooking things. They live on a pullout, which is very handy. I say if you are able to install things like pullout shelves and pullout organizers, do it because no one wants to reach towards the back of the cabinet to get anything. It is never good because the back is where things go to die. Oh my goodness, I forgot to show you one drawer. This is basically the extra utensils drawer for extra utensils. So we've got things like the hot pot utensils because we do that once a week and then the jar scrapers, the the microplane, the baster, things that don't need to be out all the time but we definitely need access to. So they live here right next to the stove. Right across from the pots and pans are the baking pans. <laughs> and I have a couple of other cooking items. I have my food processors. I have a spiralizer because I had one of those little tiny spiralizers like the that you just stick the zucchini in or whatever and you turn, you crank it with your hand, I guess. And that was really making my wrist very sore. So I decided to graduate up to a, a, a crank so that I could just crank it. Um, it's, it's quite compact, which is great because the one I had before was quite small as well. I didn't want to take up space with a tool that only did one thing, but I love my spiralizer because I love zoodles. <laughs> I also have a big food processor and a little food processor back here, <laughs> depending on how many ounces of sauce or, or salsa I'm making. Sometimes I just want to make a little bit of something. If you've ever tried to make a little bit of something in a large food processor, you know the pain. But <laughs> again, I want to say that anytime you can have anything on a pullout, take the opportunity and install it. These are quite easy to install. All you need is a, you know, a, a drill and some patience. This is where, again, pans and <laughs> processors are. Above that cabinet, we just have plastic cutting boards because they can get sanitized. And in this one we have kind of tooly kind of things. Honestly, we went with the modular organization again, except these are plastic from a company called Inner, De Inner Design. And we just have some citrus squeezers, thermometers, this egg timer thing that my husband's obsessed with, the clips for bags, and this mango cutter and this apple cutter that my husband swears are very useful. He does use these very often. I hardly ever touch these things. I would rather use my knife. But you know, whatever makes the husband happy because we, you know, you have to make your spouse happy. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is the island. I forgot to tell you we're in the island. The island is gigantic in this house and it's got so much storage inside. I really, really love it. This is a gigantic drawer that has pretty much a lot of the stuff for prep if you're cooking inside the drawer. So we've got, you know, the ice cream scoop. We have two ice cream scoops because one has a, one has one of these going and one does not, but was given to my husband from, I think his mother gave it to us. So he eats ice cream. I do not eat ice cream. So I use this for muffins and he uses this for ice cream <laughs> and everyone's happy. We've got the can opener, peelers, and we've got a kitchen shear. So you got a bench scraper, a jar pop. By the way, if you have never used a jar pop, you need one if you they are for releasing that seal of air on jars and it works so well i think this is it's like seven bucks or something it's so useful you pop it right and then it's so easy to open i i just listen you need one <laughs> mortar and pestle measuring spoons and our entire like knife collection here it's i wish they all matched in color but they do not uh, again modular drawer organization here we've got a couple of bamboo drawer organizers and then we have the bamboo knife docks they don't look as cool as they did when we first got them they look a little worse for wear but they have been really great for protecting the blades uh both from you if you stick your hand in the store and from the knives touching each other, um, so it makes your knives last a lot longer. The next drawer just has more prep items in it. We've got our colanders, we've got multiple measuring cups, we have ramekins, which I often use as prep bowls, so they get used a lot. I feel like I should actually have prep bowls, but I mean, I have all these ramekins, and sometimes I do use them to cook, like, like I just, they're prep bowls. <laughs> 
We got the mandolin, we've got uh, uh, food scales, we've got measuring cups, and uh, the immersion blender, which I have had since 1999. My godfather gave me this as a graduation gift from college, and it's got all these little attachments. It's got the, like, the immersion blender piece, and it's got a whisk, and it also has this little um, like blender thing where you can put sauce inside and make it whatever. This has been one of the most useful things I've ever had in my entire life. Cause like you can just blend things right in the cooking vessel or whatever. And that German engineering, this is brawn. This thing is so st like still going strong. It might need to be cleaned a little bit. I think there's like some tomato soup or something on it, but <laughs> it works great. And I highly recommend to get one because they're just so useful. I use this little thing to make crema all the time, like a, a habanero and, and, and a cilantro lime crema and ranch dressing <laughs> and stuff because we, um, we don't buy salad dressing. It's very easy to make salad dressing. So we just got out of the habit of buying salad dressing. So whenever we need a salad dressing, we're just like, okay, we're gonna find some acid, some fat, and maybe a flavor and some salt and pepper and see what happens and it's been, it's been great. All right, last drawer down here, we just have sort of big things. We got some mixing bowls. We got a couple of tools that don't fit in drawers very well. So they're in the big drawers. Like we got this, the little breaker upper, protein breaker upper. And this is very useful by the way. And the potato masher, which ironically, mostly gets used to mash beans rather than potatoes. Like the number of times I've mashed beans with this, far exceeds the times I've actually mashed potatoes with this. That's weird to me. But anyway, that's where they live. And we've got multiple salad spinners. Yeah, we just have multiple salad spinners. <laughs> I love this little one because if you're just eating like a little bit of salad or if you're just needing to like dry fresh herbs, this is your, this is your boy. And I use it all the time. We use these weed salad spinners that listen, don't come for me. These things get used all the time. We have the box grater. I love this box grater. It's from OXO. The best thing about this box grater is it comes with like a little reservoir, which you can put on the bottom when the top's not on, and you can shred your cheese right in the container. Now, it's not perfect. You get a little bit of cheese outside the container, but it mostly gets in here, and then you can put the top on it. If you have all your extra cheese, put it in the fridge. Good to go. OXO coming through with the product recommendations today, I guess. I love OXO. They just know what they're doing. Next to that drawer is our drawer microwave. I have mixed feelings about this drawer microwave. It's cool that it's like out of sight. You know, you can't really, it's, it blends in. You can't really tell there's a microwave there. The only thing about it is it is very, it's like short. So you can't put any like tall, vessel or anything in here because it won't fit underneath this. This is the most Boston reference I'm gonna make. But there is a, um, there is a thoroughfare, a road in Boston called Sturrow Drive. And it's got a very, it's got very low bridges that, that overhang over Sturrow Drive. And every year, somebody with their moving truck gets stuck under the bridge on Sturrow Drive. This just reminds me of the bridge under Sturrow Drive, like something's gonna get stuck. It's not ideal, but it's a microwave and it heats things up and we don't, we only just use it to reheat food and stuff. It's fine, but I'd like it to be able to put taller things inside. <laughs> and last but not least, we have our food storage drawer. So everything that we need to like put away leftovers and you know, things like making little sauces <laughs> or whatever is in here. Um, by the way, these are food huggers and these are amazing. I wish I had more smaller ones because I don't think you could buy individual sizes of them, which maybe uh, that might be a lie. I, I hope I can, but this is, this is what they look like. It's a little piece of silicone and on the back, it's like that. And when you're cutting a lemon or a lime, you can like stick it in and it suctions to the back of it. So you don't have to put it in like a bag or a container. It's pretty genius. And you just pop them in the dishwasher to clean them. So we have a bunch of different sizes in case we like get an, you know, an orange or um, something larger, a pomelo or whatever. But anyway, this is our food storage drawer. We have switched over to primarily glass over the past, I don't know, eight or so years and silicone. We have a bunch of stasher bags and these are just as functional as a single use plastic Ziploc bag. The thing about stasher bags is they're easy to clean. They last a long time. You can 
cook in them, you can freeze them because they're silicone, but they're quite expensive. So we have just made small investments in stasher bags over the years. Like we'll buy a few, you know, every year when they go on sale, but they're worth the investment because it's better for the environment if you are reusing items. I don't know, you're saving money buying Ziploc bags. <laughs> we have a little shopping unit over in the corner. I get asked all the time where this is from. This was bespoke for this kitchen, commissioned by the previous owners. They just left it here. They also left their wine fridge, which was, I guess, the, the, the piece was made to fit it. <laughs> so I don't think that we know how to unplug it either. I think there might be a hole behind there to like reach, but Oh well. <laughs> anyway, it's quite beautiful. Since the shelving in here is open, I didn't want to put like all kinds of different colored things in here. So I decided that this was a place for all of my whack jars. I have a whack jar obsession. Whenever I make like pickled onions, like pickled anything, uh, sauces, ranch dressing, uh, uh, hummus, <laughs> salsa, I put it in a jar and I have all these different sizes because I make a different amount. Like if I'm just making a meal for myself and my husband is not into like cilantro, lime, crema, whatever, I'll just make a little bit and put it in a jar like about this size and you know, I'll keep it for, gosh, how long does that keep? Like a couple days. Um, and I'll have it on like different things. I am obsessed with these jars. They're so good <laughs> and they're cute. So I just leave them out and they, since they're glass, they don't take up a lot of visual space. So, but in here we do have our coffee and tea that, um, with coffee that's not opened. And then we have tea that we're actively drinking and matcha and stuff like that. And on top, we just have some cookbooks, whatever bread we have, a wine, and our like vegetables that have to sit out and don't go in the fridge, like tomatoes and avocados and a butternut squash that I really should cook today. Above it, we have some wine glass shelves and uh, cocktail glass shelves that the previous owners left here. They, we feel like they did a really good job deciding what they would look like and in installing them. So we just have it as our floating wall bar, which I think is a really good use of wall space if you don't wanna eat up floor space with that. I also get a lot of questions about this honeycomb wine shelving. We have two bottles of wine right now just hanging out in here. And again, these were bespoke, I think made by the same wood, wood maker, not wood, not wood waker. I was almost going to say wind waker, uh, made by the same uh, wood maker as the corner unit. And they are quite beautiful. And we just kept them here because why not? They're so cool. And underneath the wine shelf is where we have our <laughs> trash can. And so like a little bit of our recycling, we have a lot of recycling, so we needed like three places to put it. But I bought this trash can for myself as a birthday gift in 2014. <laughs> and it still looks brand new. It's again, it's from Simple Human. I feel like it was like 150 bucks and I was like, I'm buying a $150 trash can for my birthday. What is life? But it's like such a great can. Um, I mean, they've got automatic ones now where you can like wave your hand over. Well, they had that when I was shopping for this can too, but I didn't want to pay that much for it. You can wave your hand over and it opens. I, maybe that's the next step actually. If we're going to go with like automatic hand dispensers, automatic trash can, that might be next. Oh, I forgot to tell you about one cabinet up here. This is just the stuff that doesn't get used very much. So it's up and out of the way. It's the Ninja, the juicer, We've got some entertainment stuff up there. We've got stuff only for holidays, like popsicles. We only do that in summer and cookies. We only tend to do that at Christmas. So um, it's basically stuff that only gets used once in a while. I did a separate video about this, but to the left of the Keurig and all that stuff is actually a little vestibule where the stairs are. And that's where our pantry is. And I love it. It was recently painted. It was a dark color before. So now it's a really light color color called Headspace and it's made by a company called Claire and it's super, super pretty. We've got drawers there. We have a very adorable sleeping puppy. And down the stairs is where we keep all of our canned goods. So we are fully stocked. We don't have to worry about going out for a while for food. I like to keep our pantry pretty full so that we can you know, if we get into a bind, we can always cook something or I can throw something together. But I really, really love this downstairs, on the way downstairs pantry. We have our sort of second living area down there on the second level. I get a lot of questions about the the walkway going down and whether or not we hit the cans on the way down or if we're carrying something, if it gets in the way. It actually does not because we've got that, that bit of the stairs 
is actually going to prevent you from touching any of the cans. There's more than enough space. I think there is about 40 inches of space but from the railing to the start of the can. So you are very, very good. And we only have things we're using every day out on the counter or things that make us happy. Like we have a plant and we have some decorative cutting boards and the salt and pepper and all that stuff. But everything else is stored down, down below and that keeps the kitchen from feeling too cluttered. Um, even though we're not minimalist, I feel like it's very calming and peaceful in here. And I really like the way it turned out. I feel like we've got a little, few little tiny tweaks to make and it's going to be so perfect. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed our kitchen update. If, I, if you have any questions, let me know. I will try my best to answer them down in the comments. Let me know down in the comment below what your hardware color is. I know that a lot of people like gold. Um, or brass uh, hardware. I was thinking about doing that, but then I was like, oh, I don't know, it's such a big change. So I opted for matte black, but let me know what color your hardware is, whether or not you have matte black, you have silver, you have chrome, let me know. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, thanks for watching. Little Clover has stopped by the pantry to ask if he can have a treat. And I think I will oblige him. Would you like a treat? You're interrupting the tour. All right, let's make a deal. If you do some tricks, I'll give you this treat, okay? Just to entertain the viewers, okay? Ready, sit, speak. Ah! <laughs> Roll over. All right, nice. Good job.